sunrise in the morning. When I see the sun rise in the morning And I feel the wind blow across my face And I hear the sound of children playing I know it's all part of God's amazing grace. Oh, I believe there's a place called heaven. And I believe in a place called Calvary. And I believe in a man whose name is Jesus. And I believe that he gave his life for me. I was there the day my mama went to heaven. I held her hand as she closed her eyes to sleep. And I felt the power of 10,000 angels. Take her soul away To be crowned at Jesus' feet Oh, I believe There's a place called heaven And I believe In a place called Calvary and I believe in a man whose name is Jesus. And I believe that he gave his life for me. And I believe that he gave his life. For me. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is over well. 
the victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow and no more pain. I will rise on eagle wings before my God, fall on my knees and rise, and I will rise as a day that's drawing near. When the darkness breaks the light And the shadow disappears And my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow and no more pain. I will rise on eagle wings before my God, fall on my knees and rise, and I will rise, and I hear the voice of many angels sing, worthy the Lamb, and I hear the cry of every longing heart, worthy is the Lamb, and I hear the voice of many angels sing, worthy is the Lamb. And I hear the cry of every longing heart. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. And I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow and no more pain. I will ride on eagle wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. And I will rise. And I will rise And I will rise And I will rise And I will rise
One step, then two, and a million more. Sunday morning, you walk that old wood floor to lift a song to heaven. Let his praises ring. Let him use your life. And hear the choir sing Well done, well done Dear faithful one Though the mountain was steep The race is run You see the Father smile Father and Son well done, well done, dear faithful one. When pain is deep and grief is great, and it's hard to make it through the day. Walk onward, soldier, for the gospel is true. And the crown and the glory is waiting there for you. And one fine day, when time is through and you've journeyed on to a land brand new shout hallelujah as you step through the gate and you feel the Savior's arms and hear the angels say well done, well done, dear faithful one. Though the mountain was steep, the race is run. You see the Father smile, Father and Son. Well done, well done. Dear faithful one, you see the Father smile, Father and Son. Well done, well done, dear faithful one. Well done, well done, dear faithful one. Uh, Jeremy, do you have one? Ron, you got one? You offer yourself to the Lord? Glad to be a Christian this morning. And you know, I, I, uh, 
I, I keep saying these girls, but when we come here and practice, I always tell them stories. But, you know, I grew up in church I, from the time I was, I can't even remember, as a baby. And as a result, most of my friends were the elders in the church, older people in the church. And <clears throat> I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm try, but, uh, I had the privilege of standing by the bedside as many of them took their last breath. And I say it was a privilege, it was a blessing to watch them in their last minutes. I always prayed, they, you know, everybody, I would say, God, just give me something to say, something, you know, I would list, there are so many good preachers, and I would say, where do they get this stuff from? And I would say, just give me something to say. And, and over and over and over, he said, son, there's nothing but the blood. That's it. There, there's, nothing, there's nothing fancy to say. Just the blood. That's all there is. And this has been my testimony song. I hope I can remember the words. You can pray for me. But uh, Even now I get so low. You know the devil lets me know. I'm so undeserving. I'm unworthy of his love. And oh, yes, I know it's true, but here I am with the chosen few. I stand today, I'm saved just by the blood, but for the blood shed on Calvary's tree, but for the blood. There be no hope for you and me For all my righteousness Is filthy rags and that's all I'd ever be But for the blood That cleansed and set me free I had no one to blame How I long I forgot the word. Anyway. Well, you just got to forgive me. I forgot the word. I'm sorry. I just forgot the word. But anyway, I'm glad to be a Christian. I noticed this morning during prayer requests that we had a lot of teary eyes out there when it came up to people we was missing this Christmas. Um, I've lost people too. Yeah, I'm sure we all have. Brother Andy lost. So I wanted to read this passage from Revelation. It always helped me. You know. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are past days. And just think about that. No more pain. No more worry. You don't have to worry if you have to make a mortgage or how you're going to afford your bills this month or anything like that. It's gone. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Seeing Pastor Eric up here in a second, unless someone's just burning to sing that song. The land of no mores. The land of no mores. Where a lot of our loved ones are, praise the Lord. If I may say just a few words and then turn you loose, would that be all right in the name of the Lord? This came uh, from Wednesday night, sis, down at your home place. Um... Just if I go too far, just let me know. But I feel like it's something that might help somebody. That night, 
I watched. A lot of the brothers, Brother Larry, I watched you. I watched Dad, a lot of the mother. I watched Brother Avis go back and forth to the truck, work as hard as you all could. And I watched Brother Larry stand at the back of that house, wanting to get in that room so bad to save whatever he could. Because you wanted to do it for your wife and family. But they were smoke boiling now that. And there was a lot of reasons not to go in there. And uh, Brother Peyton, who's back there in the back, said some words. And I said, well, that might preach one day. Well, I'm not prepared really to preach it, but maybe this is how it's going to be today. He says, I would rather be helpless rather than reckless. You see, at that time, Brother Larry, and everybody that was down there could have been reckless. Could have jumped right in the middle of all that. Or just made all kinds of wrong decisions. But in that case, being helpless in a way was okay. Because the important thing lived on, which is us. Because if would you rather have a series of guns? Brother Larry. So he was not reckless. But even though we felt helpless that night, sit there, because I don't know, Brother Avis, maybe you can tell me, but how can you pour that much water on something and it still burns? I watched him for two hours. The only thing that it is, it's just that there, that was a great force that was pushing that. But I want you to. So we were helpless. We could have been reckless. But I want to tell you all the message that I have today is this. We are not hopeless. Uh, can I read some scripture and then turn you loose, brother? <laughs> oh, man. How many people are going through life right now? How many people in here went through life reckless how many times did you turn and go out that door or picked up the things that you shouldn't have picked up or the or the good things that you knew was right before your hands but you just said no to it because you know what rather than being helpless i'm just going to be reckless i'm going to be reckless with the word of god i'm going to be reckless with his love his grace and his forgiveness I'm just going to be reckless all through life. And you know what? Not only this church today, but churches up and down this valley and across this great nation, people will choose the reckless path because I, you guys, you Christians, you guys are just helpless and you're hopeless and, and all that stuff. You're just going to sit there and sing praises to a God you can't even see. But I'm going to go out here and take things into my own hands, right? Reckless. Hopeless. No. We have hope. Let me tell you why we have hope. Because when you was studied the law of God, all 600 plus, and we did this in, in, in on Wednesday night, you were definitely uh, hopeless there. You was helpless. Because if you broke one law, you're guilty of them all. And it even said this here, but let me give you some good news here, if I may. It says this right here. Uh, let me find you. Just help me. Oh, it says this right here in 19. Now we know what things soever the law saith. Right? If you're guilty of one, you're guilty of them all. Saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Because I want to tell you right now, you are helpless before God. Because you cannot save anything of yourself. You cannot buy your way into heaven. You cannot work your way into heaven. You can't do it when you decide to do it. And when you try to do all those things, you are considered to be reckless in this faith. And he's going to tell you right now that it's, it's, you got to stop because right now, how many knows in this house that we're all guilty before God? Amen. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh be justified in his sight. For the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Who is it manifested into? 
being witnessed by the law and prophets, even the righteousness of God, ready, listen, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all of them that believe, for there is no difference. Because this, all have sinned and come short, uh, short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace and through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And now let me tell you something. You might be reckless and you might even feel helpless, but you are sitting here and you have nothing but hope. And the hope is in the name of Jesus Christ and his mighty saving power. Because if you are living by the law and you break one, you're guilty by them all. But by the blood of Jesus Christ, right, Brother Ron? But by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have all hope. And all hope lies in him. It says, all my hope is in who? We might need to sing that song in a minute. All your hope is in Jesus. So you might be reckless today. You might even feel helpless today. But I'm going to tell you something. You better not feel hopeless today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me tell you, I preached about that man at the gate for 38 years. He was helpless. What about the woman who went through, crawled through the streets? People might say that woman tried all doctors and spent her life savings. Well, look here. She's crawling through the streets. She's being reckless right now. She sure is helpless. But she knew, Sister Dina, where all her hope lied in. And let me tell you something. That was the voice that I want you all to hear today. If you've been living the life of being reckless, or if you feel here and that you are helpless, you are not in the mighty name of Jesus because there's hope in him. There's hope in him. Amen to that? Let me read you some scripture and I'll get out of the way. Oh, it's you, brother. I just want to read some salvation scripture. It is all good, isn't it? Let's see. Well, let me tell you some things which why you don't have to. I'm going to read, I'm going to read some notes here. Some, you know, you, you see something, you take a picture of it, right? God's willingness to allow Jesus to die for us shows not only God's mercy, but his love for us. Because the penalty of sin requires the shedding of blood. Right, Brother Ron? The law demanded the blood, and it must be shed for the payment of our sins. Salvation is a free gift of God. It's not cheap. It costs heaven's most prized possession. But someone may need to be punished for that, and it was him. He was our sacrifice. That's why in this, if I'll start reading, it says, it says this in verse 25 of the same scriptures. For whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare the righteousness. You say, that's a big word, Jason. What that means? That means sacrifice for you. That's what propitiation is. A sacrifice for you. The law spread out a penalty for our sins, but God allowed Jesus to pay that penalty for us. Can I have an amen there? Oh, let me tell you something. You're not helpless. You might be reckless, but you're sitting here with hope. You know, even, even until my mom passed, I had hope. But you know what? You say, well, did your hope die with her? No. In Job, it asks a question in 14, 14. It says this. It says, if a man dies, shall he live again? I'm going somewhere because it just changed. I'm going to change. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I am going to keep going because he just gave me something. Let me, let me get through this. <laughs> God was our sacrifice. Amen to that, y'all. Here we go. John 14, 6 says this. Well, y'all know what it says. We have hope because we're going to be with who? It says, I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away to prepare a place for you, I what? I will come again and to receive you unto myself for that where I am, you may be also. Oh, that's hope. You just read some hope. We're going to the land of no mores, right? Now, where was I going to go with this? Shall man live again? All right, y'all get ready to see us coming. Luke 16. Bring up Luke 16, brother. Go to verse 19. Ooh, please. And I, I promise I'll get out of the way. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which laid at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. You might look at that man and say, goodness sakes, helpless. 
He's helpless. And 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died. Look, he's right there with me. And was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. So now both of them are, has passed on. And in verse 23, and in hell he lift up his eyes. I want to say that again. In where? In hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, and all these are red letters, by the way. And he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now I'm going to tell you something right now. If you choose to be reckless in this life and not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we are telling you about your future. And when it's the tree falls, so shall it be raised. And if you die in this condition, there's one thing that happens. If you lift yourself up and you find yourself in this torment that you find this man off, there is no hope for you. Where was we at? Verse 25. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us, there is a great gulf fixed, so that which they would pass from hence to you and cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray, be therefore, verse 27, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Stop right there. I guess he keeps on going. Job 14, 14 says, if a man dies, shall he live again? And you say, what's all this Jesus stuff about? It's that you will spend eternity somewhere. They say death is final. Death is just the beginning of, of eternity. Where was he? Well, we saw this. In verse 23, it says he in hell. He, cannot, he could see into the, into the heavens. He was in great torment. He, he could speak. He could talk. What did he want? He just wanted water. He was tormented in there. He can remember, and also he knew enough that he was in a place that he didn't want no one to come there. But where was the other person at? What did it say in verse 22? Show that, J uh, Johnny. Come on now. And when the beggar died, why don't y'all see that? He was carried away by what? And he was comforted. Verse 25, it says, Right? Can you go to John 5, 28, please? John 5 and 28, and I'm going to get out of the way. I don't know how this is coming apart. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. We think, you think we have no hope? Can you go to Luke 23, 43, and I'll be out of the way? No, I won't. I'm sorry. You saw my notes that was, I was studying on. Luke 23. Y'all want to know what this is all about? Luke 23 and 43. There it is. And Jesus said unto him, Very, verily, I say unto thee, Today thou be with me in paradise. He was talking to us. And, and would you please go to Romans 5.5. 5, and then I want to ask the brother to come home. I hope this is a good scripture. If not, I'll just act like I didn't say it. Romans 5.5. 5, what does it say? And hope maketh not... Oh, man, there's that hope. Yeah. All my hope is in Jesus. So, from that night, ain't it great that he wasn't reckless? But we can find ourselves help, helpless. But helpless doesn't mean that you don't have hope. And this right here. And hope maketh not ashamed, because, uh, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is to us. So I want to ask you all right now today as Brother uh, Eric comes and, and preaches the message that you remember these things about being hopeless. No, you're not hopeless. You have all kinds of hope. And people are living their lives reckless. And you might say, oh, look at them that they're helpless. But let me tell you something. There was two people that died, right? One was in hell looking across the great gulf, and one was carried by the angels in the arms of Jesus, and today he was in paradise. Brother Eric.
I don't know where that was going for you, if it set you up or set you down, or, but that was just what I wanted to share. Just because of that night, I wanted to, because what if somebody who is on the path of being reckless can realize that they're not helpless and that they can have hope? Brother? You should have went on, brother. While and reading on it, and uh, in Corinthians, Corinthians chapter one, verse twelve. Got that up. And now, when uh, if I could title a sermon, which I usually don't, but uh, I want to know uh, we we've, we've come through the Christmas season and uh, or the birth of Jesus is what we should be celebrating more than anything, but it. Uh, would you prefer the, the basket, the fruit basket, or would you prefer the gift? Uh, I want you to think about that, and as we go into this thing, and uh, so many times we focus on what we get at Christmas, or we uh, get all tore up if somebody don't like what we got, and things, and uh, we worry about those things. But you know, the the thing that we should worry the most about is just being together, because time is so precious. No, and uh, we've seen so many times, and. Uh, you know, this year we know that uh, we know who ain't. But uh, was there some that was here that chose not to be there? You know what I mean? Some uh, wanted to be, some were just not. And uh, some that went on to heaven, I'm sure, would like to be. Right now. To say hi to us or to tuck in Christmas. But I'm sure if they could speak to us now, that they would tell you that things are really good where I'm at. Things are so good in the arms of Abraham or in paradise or in heaven, the present heaven as we know. They are so good that don't worry for me. Don't worry about where I'm at right now. You know that where I'm at, everything is good. Everything is right. Everybody that's there is excited. Everybody there is not hurting. It's the land of no more, brother. And knowing that we have the land of no more, where there's no more sorrow and Now, if we didn't have that comfort, we'd be among all men most miserable. We'd be sorrowful in our souls, but we know that we have a hope, uh, that a confident expectation inside ourselves. And I'll, I'll get to that fruit basket in a minute. But the reason we got that fruit basket is because of the Spirit of God that fills us with love and joy and meekness and gentleness. The Holy Ghost has got a basket. basket. Come on. Now we thought we focus on the gifts and some churches do and all of us, they get into the gifts of healing and the gift of tongues and they, they get into all these gifts we've heard about. So we do all these things, we get into all these gifts and, and, and they start focusing on them and they start making denominations out of them and they start making the, uh, uh, this is going to be a Pentecostal, this is going to be holiness and this. But we all, all of us are the body of Christ. I get a witness on that. People don't like to think about that. You mean we're brothers and sisters with the Pentecostal, with the holiness and all them tongue talkers and all them other things? We not. They may have difference of administration, but there's only one God. There's only one Lord, one, one faith, one spirit, one baptism. There's only one. Come to Him. Hey, we focus sometimes on the gift, and I don't know if I like that or not, but if you focus on the giver like I was on last week, the giver is what it is because the giver gave himself. When Jesus came, he said, I'll go. Nobody else was worthy. Nobody else could loose the seal. Nobody else could be the perfect sacrifice. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Therefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh 
by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are ever diversities, we hear that word a lot. You can't watch TV now unless it's two women kissing. I'll get thrown out here, they'll get better, something will happen. Or two men kissing, or somebody We'll accept everything and anything. We're getting quiet now. That's all right. I ain't here to tickle years. I'm here to tell you the truth. Amen? Let me tell you something. You can, you can, you can have alternate lifestyles. You can do all these things. You can do all that stuff. But it talks about that one that said in hell he lift up his eyes. There is a judgment coming if you don't line up in the word of God. chooses their own way, and there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, the Bible says, but the ends of the ways are of his death. You can choose right or death. You can choose your lifestyle, which is contrary to the word of God. You may end up in hell if you don't repent. Oh, you quiet now. If you would choose a relationship here on this earth over the living God of all eternity, knowing that it's contrary to the Spirit. I love you, Jesus. Do I like it? No. Do I contone it? No. My views might not be the views of the church. Or some of the other churches. That way, if you want to sue somebody, you can sue me. How's that? But I can tell you this, that God loves each one of us. It don't matter if you're good or bad, he still loves you. Can I get an amen on that? And we talk about the spirits. I don't know how I got out there, but I'm out there, so I'm going with it. Fruits are love and joy and peace and gentleness and goodness and temperance and faith and all those things. Because if you fill your basket with the wrong thing, as Brother Randy used to say, and I hear Brother John get on to him one time over it, is that the world is going to hell in a handbag. Well, there ain't scriptures for that, but that God's word ain't in your vocabulary. God's word's not in your heart. God's word, you don't have time. It might not be that you're lazy. It just might be pure evil. It might just be pure flesh. It might be just pure world. And when you get that way, there is no hope for you except Jesus Christ. So if you're looking for hope today, if you're looking for something that's better than this world, then you've got to accept Jesus. You got to have that blood applied to your heart. Suffering at the gate won't get you to heaven either, but knowing the master will. Praise the Lord. I'm going to run on over to. Uh, well, let's just stay right where we're at for a minute. Down about uh, verse 13 it says, "For by the Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free." Whether you're a sinner or not. But I can tell you, if you ain't been saved and the blood applied to your heart, you'll never make it. If you got the blood applied to your heart, you can baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost by the operations of God, the way God intended it to be in the Word, and He tells us to be, then you are my brother and sister. And yes, we are on our way to heaven. Above all the 
names over the doors. That's what matters. One body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member but many. I preached one time at Old Caney that the body of Christ God has picked each one of us. I believe you're hand-picked uh, to do what you do for God. Believe that? God has a work for you. God has a church for you. You've got one that will never be the foot. You've got one trying to hobble around on one. Hopping. It can't walk. It can't do what it needs to do. But if you take your rightful place in the body of Christ, and we all become that body that he's going to say, put me a right in And the heart keep getting harder, praise God. That's what it's all about because there's a separation. Because we have a hope that's anchored our soul. We have a hope that can't be taken away from us. That's the first thing. Don't tell us how it's the generation of God. I'm preaching the word of God. Get out. Amen. Everybody wants to categorize you as a once in grace, always in grace. Pray that you got it, amen. Because the gifts go through all these gifts. I'm not going to rush, but I'm just going to run on over. Where they see us go. Verse 9 says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spake and as a child, and I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I become a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I also, even I, as also I am known, I'll be known as even also I am known. And now abide of faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. You know what charity is? It's love. You know what's filled in the basket? We're talking about the fruit basket of the Spirit. Love, joy, and peace. When you go to the gifts, the greatest of them are love. There's only one church. They really are. Because I don't care where you go to church yet. If you got Jesus in your heart, you're going to love your brother. Because you care about their souls because you love the Lord. There ain't no such thing as a Randy May church or a Greg White church. seem helpless, just don't get wrecked. 
What about it, church? Are you ready? Are we ready? Are you ready? Thank the Lord. Hey. where I need to be, let it be. I had brain surgery, I blowed out. I had no idea. Huh. He'll set you up something. But let God be God in your life. I don't care. I don't care. You're the most loving person ever. I don't find a lot of fault in it. Unless I find it in myself. just got hell out there. But he's talking about hope that you don't have to worry about hell. He's done things for me I couldn't do for myself. I'm still a fault finder. I can't help it. I do. I look for faults. I expect fruit a lot. That is too much. Don't you? I've learned that instead of worrying about what others do, but they are, I'm going to work more on why I should be living better. Can I get a witness on that? As we're going out this year, going into the next, if the Lord blesses us to it, if he don't, we won't have to worry about all this. And I pray that you're ready. I pray that you're ready to go. I pray that you're ready to move. And if you ain't, we can show you in the Word of God today what it takes. What it takes to be ready. Because when the Lord comes back in the air, if that blood ain't applied, you'll be left. And you don't want to be left behind.
Hello. I pray that you're ready. <clears throat> Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. That verb Paul used there for the word fail is used to describe a flower. It may fall to the ground or wither or decay, but it never dies. And it never ends when you start talking about the love of God. Your jobs may go away. I pray today not suffer salvation. Then come and let us speak. Let us talk to you. God's word is real plain. Tell you exactly. You all are quiet today. Which one do you choose, the fruit basket or the gift? Fruit went out but I thank God I got to know them to come. Oh.